This is the Pixel 6 Pro, the older, more serious first child that cares almost exclusively about making its parents, or should I say parent, happy. And this is the Pixel 6, the younger, carefree, and colorful sibling who doesn't care about anything really, and received most of its specs as hand-me-downs from its older sibling. My name's Rochelle, sure, and these are my thoughts on the Pixel 6 versus the Pixel 6 Pro six months later. So let's get into it. Alright, so right off the bat, with the Pixel 6a already announced and probably coming out within the month, and the 7 on the horizon, and so for bargain hunters like myself, it poses a great opportunity to see whether these phones actually have something to offer six months later in this market where there are a plethora of other devices out there. So let's start with the look and feel of these devices. Starting with the absolutely stunning Pixel 6 Pro in Stormy Black, I gotta say, the visor design with the two-tone look is definitely a bold statement on Google's part and is definitely accentuated by the gloss black panels and the curved display, which overall makes it feel more business-like. Then we have the more playful 6 in the kinda coral color, which is kinda accurate and is a kinda interesting take from a design standpoint, as you get a flat display and thicker matte black bezels accompanied by the same visor design, just lacking the telephoto lens. Now I gotta say, while I do give the design to the 6 Pro, how these phones actually feel in the hand is a completely different story altogether. Now obviously the 6 Pro is the taller, bigger device, and while it is a little bit more uncomfortable to use, it's not impossible. However, because of the curved display, you'll find that the bezels are actually a lot thinner than the 6, and so it actually feels harder to hold and less sturdy. The 6 on the other hand has a flat screen and in turn nice thick bezels giving it a boxier feel, making it easier to hold for longer periods so the 6 takes the cake here. And it is important to note that both of these phones are sandwiched between glass, and so they do both feel pretty premium in the hand. All right, so when it comes to the camera system, it's honestly pretty much identical, except for the telephoto lens, which the 6 Pro adds. You get your standard 50 megapixel wide camera with 82 degrees field of view at an f1.85 aperture. You get a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with 114 degrees field of view at f2.2 aperture. Now with the 6 Pro, you also get an additional 48 megapixel telephoto camera with 23.5 degree field of view at f3.5 aperture with four times optical zoom and 20 times super res zoom. So photos in general up to a point are basically the same with the 6 Pro being able to push the boundaries a little further by allowing you to zoom in more. Now I love the image quality and the photos are honestly really decent in well lit environments. And the incredible image processing also means that nighttime photos retain a good amount of detail. And this is all thanks to the computational photography. Video is pretty good too, if you want to film short videos of landscapes and scenery and anything really in a general sense, you're good to go with any of these devices, maybe with a gimbal. Now there are two things I want to note when it comes to the camera system on both of these pixels. Now the Pixel lineup prior to these phones have historically been known for not really having the highest end physical hardware when it comes to the camera system. Now the Pixel 5 had a 12.2 megapixel primary sensor and a 16 megapixel ultra wide. Now despite these modest specs, the Pixel 5 actually delivered really crisp and color accurate photos that were just exposed well enough thanks to its amazing computational photography. Now with these newer devices which have quite a bump up in spec, it seems that Google really hasn't changed the software side of things that much to adapt to actually work with the upgraded hardware. And so for me personally, I think that photos come out a little bit overprocessed. Now my second point here is that while the Pixel 6 Pro does have an advantage with the telephoto lens, I honestly don't think it's a deal breaker because really go into your gallery right now and tell me how many photos you've actually taken with the telephoto lens on your camera. And it's probably not gonna be that much. So for me, it's not a deal breaker. All right, now let's talk about software and performance. Gaming on both devices is honestly a breeze. I haven't had any issues or serious overheating while playing games. Load times are quick and everything is generally pretty snappy. General performance is also really great as well. The Tensor chip really holds its own when it comes to performance. And so when going about your day-to-day -day tasks, you shouldn't encounter any issues or even lag or stutter at all. I will say, however, that the larger, brighter, and more vibrant screen on the 6 Pro does improve media consumption 
and the higher refresh rate does help it, um, especially in terms of just how snappy it is and the animations. Uh, I definitely think that the 6 Pro pulls ahead, but not by much because while this has 120 hertz variable refresh rate, the 6 comes in at a pretty close second at an adaptive refresh rate of 90 hertz. So while there is a slight difference and this phone does feel a little bit snappier, it's not by much. And both these phones are above the standard 60 hertz that's you know that Apple has had for a long time now, so I don't think it's that much of a gap. The speakers are also pretty okay. You get a dual speaker setup for surround playback and a three mic setup on both of these devices, so it's no difference there. Now, one thing I do have to note about both these phones is that the fingerprint scanner recognition time on both of these devices kind of lags behind the competition. They use an optical fingerprint scanner which uses light to illuminate your finger and match that to a copy stored in its database. This might sound all fancy, but it's actually kind of slow, and an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner is far superior. They did release an update with Android 13 that makes it noticeably faster, but it's still an optical scanner and it will still have those limitations. Alright, so at this point, it's pretty clear that the 6 Pro outshines the regular 6 in quite a few departments. You get a better screen, camera setup, and improved battery life over the regular 6 due to the larger body, as well as a high refresh rate and honestly, a sleeker looking design in my opinion. So yeah, the 6 Pro has a lot going for it. And if I had to pick from the two right now, you know what, I'd honestly pick up the 6 Pro and then I'd put it back down and go with the regular 6. And here's why. All right, so while the 6 Pro does have a bigger design, which lends itself to the bigger, better screen, as well as increased battery life, I feel that the form factor is just off for me. It is quite a tall phone, and while using it isn't too much of a problem, even one-handed for me, it's just carrying this thing around. I mean, this thing is <laughs> quite big, and it really just sticks out of my pocket. Uh, there have been a few times where it's actually fallen out of my pocket when I jump in the car. So yeah, that's something that I just kind of hate dealing with, honestly. And I feel that the regular 6 really hits that sweet spot. I mean, it's got a nice big screen, but it's not too overbearing in the sense that if I put this in my pocket, it won't stick out too much, it won't fall out of my pocket. And yeah, it just, it just feels better to hold, especially with those thicker bezels and a flat screen. So yeah, from that design standpoint, I'll just give it to the 6 there. And so yeah, while the 6 Pro looks better, I think that the 6 long term is just better, especially when it comes to handling and even just carrying it around. The next point I wanna make is price. Now the Pixel 6 Pro will set you back about a thousand USD while the regular 6 will set you back about 550 USD. And so there is a significant difference in price between the 6 Pro and the regular 6. I mean the regular 6 is slightly above half the price of the 6 Pro, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Now another point I want to make is the camera system on the 6 Pro. Now while it does have that telephoto lens, I honestly don't see it as a deal breaker because I don't take that many shots with the telephoto lens and I'm pretty sure most consumers don't. It is a nice feature to have, but unless you're really looking for that spec, I honestly don't think it's a deal breaker. And so this has been my thoughts on the Pixel 6 Pro versus the regular 6, six months later. And I gotta say, the 6 is honestly the one to go for here. You get about 90% of what the 6 Pro can do at about half the price. And that to me is a great bargain, especially since you get a better form factor and a better feeling phone overall, just because of that flat screen and those thicker bezels. So that's been it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.